Hey you guys, this is Jessica and Noam here at Rax Tracks recording in Chicago with Reverb for another episode of What's That Sound? And today we are going to be breaking down how to get the drum sounds you hear in Don't Bring Me Down by Electric Light Orchestra or ELO. So we researched this song and tried to figure out exactly what they were doing. We thought we were going to end up sampling things. It turns out they just took a drum beat from a different song on the record, slowed it down and looped it, and that's what we recreated today. So for our drums, we used a Ludwig uh, Vistalite kick drum, and then we had a Ludwig Superlight snare drum, and we use K-Dark 14-inch Zildjian hi-hats. Don't Bring Me Down drum sound is one of the best drum sounds of all time, I think. It is so unique, it's so cool, it's so powerful for the time that it came out. And when we went to recreate it, we did as much research as we possibly could to try to figure out what they were, on earth they were doing to, to make it happen. I had heard that they had recorded each instrument one at a time. I had heard that they had recorded it and then recorded re-recorded it in the bathroom on top of it as an overdub. I had heard a million things. And the most credible thing that I could find was that they had literally just taken the drum beat from the song before it on the record. Another song on the record has exactly the same drum beat. It is in a different speed and it's slightly different pitched, um, but it seems very likely that they literally just took that drum beat and played it at a different speed and then looped it and wrote a song on top of it. So when we went to recreate this today, we had to first recreate the original drum beat that they recorded at the original speed then we had to slow down that drum beat to a the speed of Don't Bring Me Down, and then we had to process it the way that Don't Bring Me Down is processed. Don't Bring Me Down has a bunch of compression on it, it has a bunch of filtering on it, and a bunch of exciting stuff to make it feel the way that it feels. It also, because it's slowed down, it has this really, really exaggerated decay to all the instruments, um, and that's all kind of contributes to this otherworldly drum sound that doesn't sound like any other drums at the time. So we were able to find out some information on what microphones they used for this drum sound. So on the kick drum, we used a Neumann FET 47. On the snare drum, we used a Neumann KM84. Now this is really unique, not because of the microphone, but because of the placement. Instead of sticking the microphone on top of the drum, like the way that most people would mic a snare drum nowadays, old school method that they would use sometimes was they would mic the shell of the drum. So they stuck the mic just facing right on the side of the drum shell and rather than just picking up the top of the sound, right, it would pick up both the top head and the bottom head and where you place that mic in the shell would balance between the two heads. It's not as direct of a sound as if you were to mic the top. It doesn't quite have the like proximity effect punchiness that comes with modern drum recording, um, but it has a knock that feels really good and it feels uh, natural in the context of the rest of the drum kit. Um, on overhead, it was a Neumann U87 and we added a room mic just because it sounds like there's a lot of room in the in the sound of these drums. So we added a Neumann U47 as our room mic. Let's listen to the mics and let's start building the full speed version. So this is the speed that we recorded this at. Uh, so here's our kick drum sound. You notice a little bit of distortion on that. I'm using a tape saturation plugin just to blow it up a little bit because it really sounds like there, there's quite a bit of distortion in this uh, in this sound as a whole. I'm emulating that with our plugins. Uh, here's our snare drum sound. It sounds different than what it would sound like if you put a snare uh, mic right on top, right? It has a little bit less attack. Uh, but it has a it has a cool body to it. Here is our overheads. 
you notice that there's a lot of low end in this overhead, right? This is a U87 just stuck right above the, above the drum kit. Um, normally, when you record drums, you would usually filter a lot of that out. For today, we're leaving it, right? Because the low end on this, on this record, it doesn't sound super, super direct, right? There's some length to it that sounds like it could be coming from some, some more distant microphones. So we're gonna keep it all and see what it sounds like very speeded down because it might be really, really useful at that speed. Uh, here is our room mic. The room mic received a little bit of compression going in. We used a Chandler TG1 uh, on limit mode to compress the room mic on its way into Pro Tools. Let's hear all those together. It's not terribly exciting on its own, right? It does not sound like what we want it to sound like yet. So. Now is the point where we have to slow everything down. Now we're using the various speed function in Pro Tools. When they would have recorded this, they obviously were recording it on tape, right? So um, all they had to do was change the tape speed and it would have both changed the tempo of the song and it would have also changed uh, the pitch of, the, of all of the drums, right? Because the tempo and the pitch are coupled together when you're recording in a tape situation. Uh, in Pro Tools, you have to determine that it's gonna do that. Right? So in Pro Tools, we set all of our tracks to elastic audio and set it to the very speed algorithm and then set them all so that they follow ticks rather than samples. Right? And when you set all those settings together, when you change the tempo in Pro Tools, it's going to change both the speed and it's going to change the pitch of anything that you recorded. So we started out at a 136 tempo. We're going to drop it down 20 BPM and see what it sounds like. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit of the character that this original drum, drum beat had, right? Um, you get the, uh, the, the length on that snare, right? That, that really, really unnatural length that does not sound like it happened in this world. We're starting to get a bit of that, but we need to bring it out more. Um, so we're gonna add some really extreme compression to this and some really extreme EQ and filtering to make it kind of uh, uh, have a more exciting sound. So here's our EQ. All right, so that's our EQ. Now here's the real kicker. Let's add our compression. All of a sudden it comes to life, right? It brings out all the little idiosyncrasies in the drum kit. It brings out all the nooks and crannies of, of what's happening in the room. And it adds a ton, a ton of energy to the sound, right? Uh, let's listen to everything together. All right, you guys, that was another episode of What's That Sound. We hope you enjoyed it, and please let us know in the comments what other songs you would like to see us break down in the future. We'll see you next time.